Thanks for joining us for the Member Excite presentation. The Member Excite presentation is informative, interesting to the audience, and showcases the strengths of the presenter as an entrepreneur and their area of expertise. It's not a sales pitch, it's a 10 minute educational and insightful exploration into what they do. And of course, it's exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our VX Excite presenter today. Brendan Giles from Worrells to present to us on Keys to Recovery. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Brendan Giles. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to today and just going to do a quick run through um, some of the key challenges we see for businesses over the next 18 months and then uh, some strategies that businesses can use to manage those challenges. Obviously, it's 10 minutes, it's going to be very high level. Um, if anyone wants to dig into any of this stuff uh, with me afterwards, happy to sit down and have a chat. Um, and we'll, we'll be doing six of each because uh, my last favourite number is six. Progressing. Yeah, it is a good reason. Um, so challenges for business. Uh, we expect the economy is going to recover pretty quickly now that everything's opening up. Uh, and especially with international borders reopening, um, you know, we're getting uh, international students back and uh, migrant visa holders back um, starting next month. I um, think that's just going to accelerate the recovery. Um, but there are going to be some hiccups and challenges along the way. Uh, the first of those is going to be ongoing difficulties uh, changing staff. Uh, we're 800,000 people fewer than we were when we started uh, the pandemic. Uh, and that's a lot of people missing from the workforce. And in particular, we're seeing shortages in school labour, in construction, in accounting, in you know, legal profession. Those kind of things, and also on the other end, at very low skill, cheap labour, you know, retail, hospitality, and um, on farms, doing fruit picking and things like that. Um, and that shortage is going to push wages up, and that's going to be a challenge that businesses need to manage. Uh, second, um, we're going to have an unstable trading environment. Um, we can see uh, over in Europe at the moment, there's lockdowns being re-implemented as we go into winter. COVID's a seasonal virus. Um, we expect that you get into winter next year, we're probably going to have some outbreaks, we're probably going to have some snap lockdowns, those kind of things. Um, especially if we don't manage to get booster shots into everyone's arms uh, before we get into next year. Um, third is dealing with the hangover from COVID. Um, a lot of businesses defer expenses, uh, stop paying their tax because the tax is very, very supportive. Um, and now they've got a bit of a hangover and get there, they need to have a strategy to deal with. Uh, and so it doesn't wipe out their business um, as things are going. Get an extra page there for some reason. Um, four is changing consumer habits. Um, a lot of businesses have been, a lot of individuals so have been introduced to shopping online, doing Zoom, and they want to keep doing that. Um, they're not going to want to go back to brick and mortar stores. Um, Surveys show that about 49% of Australians will reduce their attendance at brick and mortar stores following the pandemic. And more than 85% of households are now regularly buying things online. That's up from uh, just under 60% before the pandemic. So that's a big change that we're going to see this. That businesses will need to adapt to. Um, ongoing supply chain issues around the world. Um, this is a long-term problem that's going to take two, three, possibly even four years to work out um, because a lot of those issues are structural and they're built into the way the world economy works. Um, and I guess you know, those kind of big structural changes take a long time to, to, to change. Right? The world economy is a big ship and you can't turn it quickly. Um, and six is interest rate risk. Um, the Reserve Bank keeps telling everyone that there's going to be no rate rises before 2024. Uh, I don't think that's true. Um, we'll see rises before then, and we're already seeing you know, fixed rates go up. The bond yields are three or four basis points above uh, the cash rate at the moment. And so, even if the, uh, the Reserve Bank holds on pushing up interest rates, I think the market's going to push them up for them. So, businesses are going to have to deal with more expensive financing and impact that has on consumers' money. Um, for every 100 basis point rise in interest rates, that's 1%. Uh, about 5% of household disposable income uh, gets sucked out of the marketplace. And, you know, that's a big chunk of money available that's going to affect discretionary spending for individuals. So moving on, uh, looking at some key things that small businesses can do to try and manage themselves through the next 18 months to two years. Uh, again, pretty high level stuff. First, actively managing your accounts. So it's making sure 
that you're doing your accounts, you're keeping them up to date, you've got a good bookkeeper or someone. Um, too many businesses that we see that are in trouble, books are six months out of date, 12 months out of date, and that means they don't know where they are. And when you've got a rapidly changing business environment, you need to know where you are so that you can know what you can do to adapt and manage that risk. Um, and hand in hand with that is actively managing your budgets. Um, so you want to have forward budgets where you say you know where you're going to be. Um, so the accounts know where you are, budgets know where you're going to be. And ideally you want to have some scenarios built into those budgets. And so what happens if things aren't quite as good as I expect them to be? What happens if things are great and how am I going to deal with that? <laughs> yeah, have a plan in there and then monitor those budgets actively every month. Sit down, see where you are and care. And then importantly, revise the budgets. See too many businesses, they set a budget for 12 months in the future and they never look at it again. Or they just, you know, they fall behind the budget and they never revise that budget to reflect what is happening in reality. Um, third is invest in your employees. Um, there's a lot of movement in employees, there's the great resignation. Um, and the way to keep your employees is not to work them to the bone or just try and offer them more money. You need to build a great workplace culture that you know, makes people want to come to work, builds a little community within your workplace so that people want to come there and it's not so much about the remuneration, it's, there, it's that they're working with their friends, it's an environment they like. Um, we put a lot of time and effort into that at Worrells. Um, we've had no staff to know in the last three years, um, you know, despite all the eruptions in the accounting industry, and especially the insolvency industry. Um, and so you know, it really can work if you put the time and effort into doing that sort of, you know, making your firm a family more than just a workplace. Uh, fourth, it's moving with the market. If your employees or if your customers or your employees want to work from home or they want to do a Zoom meeting instead of a physical meeting or they want to buy your products online, you have to be where the customers and your employees want to be. You can't be dictating, you know, everyone has to be in the office again because, you know, if your employees don't want that, they're not going to come in. Say if your customers want to buy your stuff online and you're like, no, I'm insisting on you got to come into my shop. It's not going to work. Uh, fifth is having a plan to deal with the uncertainty. So especially in a lot of businesses, you could get, and we have this in our city office, there's a COVID case in the building, the building shut for three days, you know, you've got to reschedule meetings, you've got to have a plan for what you do. It's even worse for like a hospitality business or something, if they get closed for a week because there's a case, or you lose a key employee for 40 days because they get hit with a, you know, as a close contact, or God forbid they catch COVID. You need to have a plan in place for what you're going to do. Because it's almost inevitable that every business is going to have some kind of issue like this. Uh, and last is monitor your solvency. Um, a lot of businesses, they've taken on more debt through the pandemic period, and the solvent trading is a real risk that business managers, businesses need to manage, especially the owners, because there's a personal liability risk there if you don't manage it. Uh, and so it's just keeping an eye on can you pay your debts? Are things getting out of control? And if they are starting to get out of control, Go get some advice, get the right help, take the steps you need to to make sure you're protecting yourself as a business owner. All right. Thank you, everyone. Any questions? Yeah, questions for Brandon? I'd like to congratulate Laurel on um, zero turnover. No. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Very impressive. That is yeah. So, do you want to share some of your strategies as to how you do that? Like, how do you retain your staff? So, it's more about a feeling thing. So we treat everyone as more of a family. Yeah, that's what I said. Family things. was the key. That's a yeah. big And so we do a lot of like the staff events. We hold them at our houses. You know, everyone comes to our place and you know, we do you know, cook dinner. We do a lot of staff events where you know it's cooking together, just spending time like you know like a family does. Mm -hmm. um, you know, making sure partners people can bring their kids along. Mm -hmm. So it's more of you know, it's everyone. It's not just you. Um, yeah, that's the sort of stuff we do. And then you know just. Taking time to sit down and talk with your staff, they've got worries. You know, through COVID, there's a lot of you know, just sitting down one on one with staff. Um, we try and do a one on one with every single, single staff member at least once a month just to find out how they're going. Is there anything they need? Is there anything we can do to help? And just you know, being really understanding and not putting their productivity or their KPIs first. How many teams do you have for us? Um, so, in our New South Wales business, we've got five. Uh, and then, you know, nationally, we've got about 16 of them. Awesome. Yeah. Do you see a big surge in uh, uh, completion? 
Uh, I think it'll be very slow. Uh, I don't know if anyone's tried to book a flight overseas or book a flight back to Australia. Um, it's not easy and it's very expensive still. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of roadblocks in the way of you know, you know, you testing things and stuff you have to do. And so I think it'll take a long time. For people to get the confidence to you know, run off to another country. Yeah. And saying that everyone's leaving Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Just Australia wide. Two years ago, it was a place to be. Yeah. Now, now we're flying out of there. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. <laughs>